again here on this Wednesday, August 15th, 2018. We're halfway through the month already, oh my goodness. Um, I'm here with my next updated video. Real quick, happy birthday, Landon. Uh, my nephew turned seven today. Uh, today is also, gosh, today is a lot of things. Mirabilia release, have you guys seen March's Aqu Aquamarine Fairy? She's gorgeous. Um, what else is today? Today is three days from my brother's 29th birthday, so happy almost birthday, Matt. Uh, see you on Saturday. Um, what else is today? It's floss tube day. So let's just go ahead and uh, jump right in. And we are going to start with some announcements. So the first announcement that I have is just really more of a thank you than an actual announcement. It's just thank you for your well wishes um, and your sympathy <laughs> with regards to my back, like I talked about last time. You might be able to tell, but I am pillow and heating pad free today. Um, so I'm improving. Um, the thing with <laughs> the thing with back injury, back pain whatever, is that you start to feel better, and so you're like, cool, I'm back to normal, I can just go ham <laughs> and, like, be fine. So that's kind of what happened. Um, One day last week, I was feeling pretty good, and I decided to get into my office, craft room, uh, catch-all room, really, um, and try to do some organizing, and kind of, I don't want to say I re-injured it because I don't feel like I injured it, uh, but yeah, definitely put me back a few steps. There's the back puns again. It's fine. Um, so there is that. Um, so I am, I'm improving, but I'm not quite a hundred percent as such. And you probably already know this, this video is not terribly long today, um, because I need to just take it easy as best I can, and that's kind of what I've been doing this week. I've been chillaxing. Yeah, I've been taking it real easy this week. Moving on from that, uh, let's talk about retreats 2019. Um, I've been asked the question several times, Jess, are you going to StitchCon 2019? Jess, are you going to Arizona Stitch Fest in April? And the answer to both of those questions is sadly no. Um, StitchCon 2019, I kind of already knew that that was probably going to be a no for me, um, just because of some plans and some family vacations potentially next year. Um, I just couldn't commit to that now, um, not knowing officially what's happening next summer. Um, and then the dates came out end of June, and so there's high probability for for some things interfering. And so StitchCon for me, unfortunately, is also is a no. Arizona Stitch Fest, it pains me <laughs> to say that I, I, I'm not going to Arizona Stitch Fest. It pains me to say this. Um, because if it had been any other weekend, pretty much, in April, May, March, if it had been any other weekend, then I would be going. It'd be that simple. Um, but as it stands, the, the weekend that it's planned for is the 11th through 14th, I think, I want to say. That is more than likely the um, Virginia Tech tragedy anniversary weekend, um, the 3.2 Run in Remembrance um, weekend. And as much as I would like to say I'm good mentally that weekend to not be in Blacksburg, I don't know that that's the case. I don't know that that's the case. So I had to pass on Arizona Stitch Fest. Isn't that sad? That stinks. <laughs> there are some people that I have been dying to meet who are going to Arizona Stitch Fest and I can't. So, 
as it stands, I've got zero retreats next year. Great. This is awesome. Super happy. Anyway. Okay, so let's move on from sad topics. No Arizona Stitch Fest, no Stitch Con for me. Um, and then next we have Q&A and ISO, and those are taken care of. So no Q&A, no uh, Q, yeah, no Q&A, <laughs> no ISO this week. Um, so let's just keep trucking right along, and we are going to move into the works in progress. So these are the things that I have worked on since I last saw you. And I've worked on quite a few things because hashtag arbitrary August. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last we spoke, I was still working on The Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia. Oh, heads up, this is going to be the Mirabilia minute here. Just saying. Um, so, Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia. Um, I was working on her through the rest of Wednesday, and so I'll just go ahead and show you real quickly um, what further I got accomplished. I'm not going to do befores in this one today because um, the changes are not really all that significant. So I'm just going to do my little before and afters um, at the end of each project segment. So here is Lady of the Flag and all of my parch threads. So I made a little bit more progress, I think, in this region here. Pardon my nails. Um, I've got Color Street. Thanks, Jen Upton. Um, Coral Bay, but I've had them on for two weeks, and I am limping them along, so they're getting a little short. Anyway, um, yep, loving this. Had this big section right here. Um, I still have a, a little bit of it left to do. So my August goal is, um, I don't want to say halfway, but maybe 40%. Yeah, I'd say 40% um, to completion on the August goal. So uh, given my plans for September, I can easily get my August goal done, my September goal done, and probably into my October goal if I'm um, totally honest with myself. So. I will officially get back to her in September, but maybe sometime in August here. I don't know. The wheel decides. <laughs> Wednesday night I spun it for my first official arbit arbitrary August piece. And when this piece came up, I was so excited. I was so happy because this was one of my favorite things that I started during Mania 2017, and I haven't worked on it since. So I was really excited to get to Garden Beauty by Mirabilia. She's one of my absolute favorites. This is um, design number 86, and she doesn't get a whole lot of love on social media. She's not one of the popular ones, um, but I adore her. Nonetheless, what I had started during Mania 2017 was basically nothing, and so I spent two days on her. Uh, my fabric here, by the way, is a 32 count Belfast and Carriage Wen by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here is what I got done. So, what I had before. And you'll see here in just a second in the before and afters was um, a little bit of this brown corner bit and then the pale green here. And that was it. So in two days, I made some pretty decent strides. Didn't quite make my goal, um, but there's no real surprise there. I set pretty lofty goals. I wanted to get this corner done, and it's not yet. And then I wanted to either get down to her hair because her hair starts like right here. It would be really easy to get, get down to that. Or to this topiary that's right here. Um, it was pretty lofty goals for, for just two days of work. So, yeah. But I am nonetheless really pleased with, with the progress made. I absolutely adore this. I can't wait to get back to this one. Um... It's going to be a while before this one, I think, is a focus mirror, 
but like a couple years. But um, she's gorgeous. Next. Mm, so much excitement. Um, <laughs> so Saturday, August 11th. I misspoke last time um, and I said that the 11th was World Cross Stitch Day. That is incorrect. This year it was on the 10th. Last year it was on the 11th. Next year it's on the 11th. I don't know who picks these things, but nonetheless. Um, and so anyway, it doesn't matter because Saturday was the two-year Facebook friend anniversary for Belinda Ozzy Stitcher and I. And we had had this in the plans for a very long time that we were starting Fairy Moon on that day. Um, and then uh, Lenny Stitching Noni on Instagram, she joined us as well. So feel free to jump in. If you've got Fairy Moon, go ahead and join us. Um, and I decided to move Fairy Moon to my Megan Line Mommily bag. I thought it was kind of perfect. Megan, Stitching May, Emily, Belinda, it just kind of all goes together. Um, so... I moved Fairy Moon over here. Now this fabric is never going to show up properly in any respect whatsoever unless you're in person with me and even then sometimes I don't know that I'm seeing it right. But anyway, so this is the original printing of Fairy Moon um, and this is Mirabilia design number two. It doesn't say on the chart. Oh yes, yes it does. Mirabilia design number two, um, circa 1993. And I have always loved this design because this design always makes me think that this was originally uh, a Marilyn Levitt and Blown's design. It looks so much like her aesthetic. Um, and so it's almost like a collaboration between mother and daughter with this one. I love it. So... Okay, so there's a couple of things with this before before I show her. The reason, I hope that it's okay that I tell this story, Belinda. Belinda told me about a little over a year ago that she had a dream that she came to visit and she saw my stargazer and fairy moon framed up next to each other. And so that was what inspired her to then send me this. Um, and it's just, it's all, it's, it's such a beautiful, such a beautiful concept, right? Um, to help Belinda realize this dream a little bit. And hopefully she can come visit and make it even more official. Um, so my intention is absolutely to do that. This design is 274 stitches tall. Stargazer is 268 stitches tall, I think. So, like, they're of a similar height. And, I mean, obviously, a majority of the height here is the moon all the way up above her head. But Stargazer has this very similar pose looking towards the sky. I mean, she's Stargazer. So, I felt the need to flip her so that the moon is, like, the centerpiece between the two of them. So Fairy Moon is facing the moon this way and Stargazer will be facing the moon this way. So I mirrored it. And um, I am so excited about this. I thought I was real creative. <laughs> I thought I was a pioneer for something for once. Mm -mm. Nope. Pretty much several people have done this. Um, I, am, I am no pioneer. Ooh, you're getting more purple than I get in real life. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty great. So this is on 28 count cashew linen in shadow by Picture This Plus. And my stargazer is on 32 count hand dyed linen, so they're not going to be the same height. Um, not exactly, but that's okay. I don't mind. Maybe I will frame them in a similar heighted frame so that those proportions are similar, maybe. Um, and so I gave this two days. <laughs> See if I can figure out 
There we go. So this requires a fat half of fabric because she's 259 stitches wide. She's real wide. So, um, so there's the progress that I made. Now guess what y'all? The moon is done. Except for beads. The moon is done. Because, and I didn't realize this looking at it, that entire um, crescent moon on the inside is beads. It's 100% beads. It's so gorgeous. Um, so the moon is done. And there are four shades of gray silver in there. Gorgeous. And then I came down here. If you're getting ready to start Fairy Moon, don't do what I did. <laughs> do not start with the moon and then have to grid your way over here. It's terrifying. I spent probably two hours making sure that I had that right. And I still, I'm still concerned that I have it wrong. Um, so anyway, so I gritted down and I started with her hair, uh, with the darkest shade in her hair. And she's just got two shades in her hair. And then I was like, you know what? She needs a face. I've got to get to that face. So I started her face. Her face is so much more rounded than I'm used to with mirror faces. Like, it's just, she's got cheeks, like yours truly. So I thought to change it to give her, I don't know, to thin her face out a little bit, but I'm round-faced. So you know what? My girl here can have a round face. Also, her name is, oh, I forgot her name. I gave her a name. I gave her a name and I can't remember what it was. Iceling. That's right. Iceling. Because Iceling, A I S L I N G, is Scottish Gaelic for dream, according to Google. Yeah, I Googled it. Um, I have no I have no Scott in me. Um, but I thought that that was pretty perfect. Anyway, so there is Iceling, and I am super, super thrilled with, with how it looks. Um, she is not charted with an eyebrow, but I could not get her face to work without one. So I gave her, I gave her an eyebrow, and I saw somebody else did that. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm a huge fan, huge fan. This is going to be a slow whip. Here we go. With the, the fancy bendy hole. Um, <laughs> this looks really strange right now with those strings hanging from her, from her throat, essentially. <laughs> this looks real strange. But whatever. Anyway, um, love her and always looking forward to getting back to her. Um, this one's going to take a while. But that's, that's kind of okay. I'm okay with that. So, yeah, I can't get over how well you guys can see purple in real life or on camera, and I can't get this in real life. Originally, I had said that my new starts this month were going to get three days. Um, however, I decided to cut that short. I decided to cut that to two days because. My big goal for this month is Arbitrary August. Um, and I will talk more about that when I talk plans because I have kind of a theory on this whole Arbitrary August thing um, and why it is proving so successful, at least for me personally. Um, so I wanted to give, I wanted to give all of it um, as much time as I possibly could devote to Arbitrary August. And in doing so, I had to trim my new start dedicated time a little bit short. It's fine. It's not a big deal. They're getting started and they're getting um, dedicated days. As it stands, I'm going to get a total of nine projects for Arbitrary August because I'm giving them two days because every day swapping is not my jam. Um, so I'm just going to get to nine projects. So I just wanted to be sure that I gave 
my due diligence to, to this crazy idea. Okay. So finished up Fairy Moon on Sunday. Sunday night, I hit the wheel again, hoping for not another Mira because that was three Mirabilias in a row. And as much as I love Nora's aesthetic, I was ready for something different. Fortunately, Tiny Decisions delivered and gave me Summer by the Cricut Collection. And I was super excited to get to this. Look at this gorgeous needle minder here. Love that. So, uh, this is on a fabric that you're never going to be able to see properly. Really, this one you're not going to be able to. This is pastel lilac, if you can believe it. And um, you have to be looking for it to be able to see it. It's really not pink, but supposedly it is. Anyway, uh, pastel lilac Belfast. And I decided to set my two-day goal uh, finishing one letter. And so that one letter was the S. And the S is done. Now, the letters are done, um, the S and the M, I mean, this color is found in all six letters, but it's most prevalent in the S, the M, and the R. Um, and that is 38.65. And here on camera, it looks like the letters disappear. But they really don't. Uh, in person, I can see them just fine. There's enough going on there that I can see them just fine. So this was great. I was able to get my gold on and I even did a little bit more. Um, I did this flower right here in between the S and the U. I did this little cherry branch that wasn't quite done. And I started on the bush climbing the M there. I still need to backstitch it because right now it just looks like a smattering of stitches. Um, so goal accomplished. This chair makes me so happy. <laughs> per the chart, it looks hot red and yellow, right? Orangey yellow, but like a hot red color. This is the charted colors, people. Like this is, this is how it's supposed to look, except for the heart, because what I realized was that this looks awful hokey. It looks like a muted hokey. It looks like, like vintage Virginia Tech colors, vintage maroon and orange. Um, it looks kind of girly, but I'm not mad at it. <laughs> and I, I just, I love it just the way it is. So I decided to leave the heart out. The heart is supposed to be in uh, like a deep dark blue. I left it out. And I'm going to turn these chairs into his and her chairs because there's one here and then there's another one over here. And I'm going to change the colors to this one to be true maroon and orange. Um, so 902 and I don't know, I'm going to have to figure out my burnt orange. Um, so it, they'll be like his and hers at around deck chairs. And I love it. I'm so excited. So um, very, very excited about that love how it's coming together. In two days, I was able to stitch that whole letter. I think I had like 10 stitches done in this top corner up here. Um, but two days, I was able to finish that out. So like, honestly, I think like maybe seven to 10 days more would see this done. I think that would do it. Oh, that's something I forgot. I keep forgetting this. Okay, so, Saturday, Bendy stitched Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Um, she did her tiny decisions, and it pulled Eliza Belcox. And it was like her second BAP on a Saturday, and so she was like, all right, fine, we'll take it, we'll run with it, it's BAP Saturdays now. And I was like, well, I am so in, I am so in. Because I was starting Fairy Moon. She's on a fat half. That's, that's a BAP to me. I would also qualify this as a bath. Any piece that I have that needs to go on my large millennium frame or more, um, so my not quite white work, which doesn't even fit on one of my frames, um, or this, which is long, it's not very deep, um, but I would still count this as a bath because I need my frame. 
<laughs> to, to work on these. So I'm in for BAP Saturdays. Um, I'm still doing my random number generator thing and it'll be fine because here's the deal. I went through all of my whips and I had to look at them. Of my 65 current works in progress, I think, I think so, um, 21 of them are BAPs according to this rule. 21, that's like a third of them <laughs> require my big frame. That's insane to me. Um, I didn't realize that it was that, that it was that significant, but really. So, um, anyway, BAP Saturdays from here on out. This is a BAP. Even if it only is going to take me like 15 total days to finish, it's fine. It's just a fast BAP. We have BS BAPs and fast BAPs and BAP Saturdays. <laughs> I love the lingo. Anyway, so there is, there is summer. So last night I random number generated my project for today and tomorrow and it pulled Flower of the Month by Ellen Morristro. I did not bring that with me because I'm just going to wait until next week and show you after I get my two days on it done. Um, there's just no sense in bringing it today. So uh, that's that. So you'll see that next week. Something to look forward to. I was really excited to finally pull um, a Year of Whips piece. That was kind of special. Okay. Next. Something a little bit unexpected. Something that I don't think anybody on Instagram knew I was doing. In this moment by Heaven and Earth Designs. Artwork by Jeremiah Kettner. Yep. I pulled it back out. Uh, three days ago. So not when I said I was going to, but three days ago. So I decided to get back to this. Um, the primary reason is that I've been talking about bringing back Heaven and Earth Design weekends. It's perfect. This is a bat. This thing is flipping huge. <laughs> 525 by 529. Hey, Michelle, does that count as a bat? Pretty sure. Um, pretty sure that qualifies for an FBAP. Anyway, um, so I've been talking about bring the, bringing Hade Weekends back, specifically starting in September. But my motivation to work on my full coverage designs has been, kind of, it's been, like, ever since I ended up dropping out of the Hade Challenge on day 20, I, um, I just haven't been motivated at all to work on in this moment or any hate whatsoever or any full coverage. So in gearing up for working on it every weekend, uh, I needed to generate some interest in it again. And so I pulled it back out, I loaded it up on the Q-Snap and I worked on it a little bit. And then yesterday I worked on it a lot. Uh, so here is where I am at currently. So the last time you saw this, I had the top row done of page three, right? And so since then, I've done about 700, more than that, no, just about 750, 760 stitches, something like that, in that, in that upper left corner. <laughs> I'm directionally challenged sometimes. Um, so yeah, a few hundred stitches over the last few days. Okay, so I'm officially out of the Hade Challenge, the 100 Days of Hade Challenge. That's fine. Um, I have always wanted to go back to it, though. I've always wanted to sort of pick up the challenge and just stick with it myself. So these last few days I've done that, and I've decided that I'm going to do this like they do in soccer. So any time stoppage is added to the end of the game. So I missed 20 days of this. Exactly 20 days of the 100 Days of Hate Challenge. So the original challenge ends on October 9th. Mine will end on the 29th. Um, and that's if I don't have any stoppage between now and then. We'll see. 
Um, so I'm kind of excited about, about the prospect of that. So then, because I'm me, I did the math. <laughs> and um, I was curious to see if I wanted to get my goal of these three pages done by the end of the year, how many stitches a day do I have to do? And so there's a combined total of just over 22,000 stitches to go. So just over 20,000 stitches as of right now, given what I already have done on page, on page three. So just over 20,000 stitches. And then as of yesterday, I had to do 160 stitches a day to have these three pages done by the end of the year. 160? I could do that. I could totally do that. If I miss a day, then I'll make it up later. I mean, like, I could, I could do that. I'm, I might falter. That's okay. But I could totally do that. I think. Probably, maybe. Um, so then... I was thinking, okay, well, 160, for me, that's a really weird place to stop. Like, I don't count these blocks until they're done. So I could do 200. So then when, that, when would that get me done with these three pages? If I did 200 stitches a day, I'd be done November 30th. I could reach this goal by November 30th. Sign me up. <laughs> I'm here for it. So... I am not going to be doing hate weekends, I don't think. I don't think. Um, I'm just going to stick to working on this every day, just a little bit, just little 200 stitch blocks. No, no big deal. Um, some days I'm going to fail. Some days we're going to be in Blacksburg. Some days I'm going to be at Stitch Fest in Northern Virginia. Some days I'm just not going to want to work on it. That's okay. That's not a big deal. I'll make up for it eventually or I won't. Um, but I'm gonna work on it every day or I'm gonna plan to so there is that so that's that's kind of my plan for this um, yeah I'm I'm excited I'm really excited I'm also really excited because this right here this hot pink section here let me pull back my, my picture is the edge of this giant pink flower here I'm really excited to do that so, woo, working on that, hope to get those three pages done. If I could get those three pages done, that would be so wonderful because that would set me up really nicely for getting to um, her face next year, which is the goal. Plans are kind of weird, so um, because I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> um, and that's kind of what's going to lead me into this discussion on why arbitrary August is so, why I think it's so successful, at least for me and maybe for others. So, the Tiny Decisions app makes it a lot of fun. It just adds it. It just adds something a little bit fun to the mix, but I think that the real exciting part about Arbitrary August is there's this concept in writing. If you are a writer, then generally speaking, and I'm going to blanket statement this, generally speaking, you will fall into one of two categories. You either pants or you plan. And so plan is pretty obvious. You outline, you um, organize your thoughts before you start writing. You know part A, part B, part C, finale, beginning, all of the um, standard steps in a story. You've got it all worked out. You know when you're going to do your big reveal. You've got it all planned out. So that's a planner. And then there's a pantser. And that's just somebody who sits down with a blank document and just puts words to paper. General idea of what they want the story to be, but other than that, just write. Just, just write. Just get the words out. Um, 
somebody described it as the words are in my fingers and I have to get them out of my fingers. Um, so generally speaking, you will fall into those two categories. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I'm a planner. <laughs> it's just my jam. Okay, but here's the thing. They say that if you're going through writer's block to try the other method for a little bit. If you are stuck on your story, you're stuck on your direction, you're, dis you're stuck on your character development, you're stuck on a scene, you're stuck. Try something else. Try planning it if you're a pantser. Try pantsing it if you're a planner. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Um, so try something different um, and usually that helps. It also helps sometimes to try a different story. So let's say you are you're writing idea A pants style and you hit roadblock and it's like a wall. I mean it's like you can't move past it. Can't sort out how to how to get through this part. So then they say to plan working on something else, idea number two, and vice versa. So as a planner, I don't want to say that I was stuck necessarily in the way that I've worked on things. But pantsing I'm essential, Arbitrary August is essentially like a form of pantsing. It's essentially a form of doing something totally outside of my comfort zone. It's, um, it's not how I normally do things. And it's been a lot of fun and it's reinvigorated me. That's really the ultimate goal of, of trying the other method, specifically in writing, but it can be applied here too. Um, it's reinvigorating. I feel reinvigorated. I feel reinvigorated to taking me time to work on other things. I have planned and planned and planned on working on my Year of Whips. And in July, I got Year of Whips Syndrome. Um, and so this is reinvigorating me to either focus on the things that I want to focus on or not. But like, it's just, it's getting me a little bit, a little bit hyped. I felt a little bit down about the fact that I was kind of, I don't want to say calling it quits, but like I was feeling a little bit down that I wasn't going to be able to reach my year of whips goals. Um, I was feeling a little bit down about not reaching really any of my goals for the year. Um, I was feeling a little bit bummed out. And so this is sort of like jazzing me up a little bit. So I think that that's why Arbitrary August is working so well for me. Anyway, I just, I, I have that theory about why it's working well for me. Um, Sarah Stitch and Mommy, Sammy J, um, also planners, also consistent planners. Um, and we're just sort of like going off the beaten path, so to speak. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm like super excited. I like Arbitrary August so much that, like, really, Arbitrary Full Life. Mm -hmm. So I already have a wheel put together for October um, because I'm going to be doing Dark October stitching all month, except for one thing. Um, and I'm going to random number generate my pieces or Tiny Decisions app my pieces all month. I'm so excited. I also have a few new starts that I need to build in, but let me show you my wheel. So far I have 10 items in there. There's a few more going in. Um, I'm so excited. I can't wait. And who knows? I mean, this random choice thing might become a regular thing. Um, it might be just a, just a freshen things up kind of a thing for me moving forward. So, loving that. Loving that. Okay, next. Uh, plans otherwise. I'm starting uh, Plum Street Samplers Queen Sampler Elizabeth I on uh, August 23rd with uh, Layla the Novice Stitcher for her birthday sal. I've been asked a few times about where to find that pattern and I don't know. 
secondhand hand sashes is all I can really give you at this point. Um, I had purchased mine from the Cottage Needle on Etsy. It's no longer available, so I must have snagged the last copy. Um, I'm sure that there are some available in D stashes and secondhand, like I said, um, but I don't know where else one might find that. I'm sorry. Um, it appears to be a little bit out of print. Okay, so I'm doing that on the 23rd, and I will work on it also on the 24th. Um, and that's just next week. That's crazy. Okay, then September 1st. So that weekend, everybody's starting Tis the Season, and that's really great, and I'm so excited for everybody doing that, and I can't wait to see everybody's progress. I'm doing something different. <laughs> so Belinda Ozzie Stitcher, Lorna the Ladybird Stitcher, and recently Sarah Stitch and Mommy have been starting The Queens by Mirabilia. Um, as it pertains to the change of seasons per Australia, because Belinda and Lorna are both in Australia. So on the first day of, I have to think here, winter, they started Winter Queen by Mirabilia. And I love this. I have loved watching this concept come together. And I wanted to join in, but I don't have the seasonal queens. Um, and I don't know that I want them. However, I do have these. These are the maidens of the season. And so I'm jumping in. I am jumping in on September 1st. This idea suddenly sprung to me while I was watching Lorna's video a few weeks ago. And I was like, I could do this, just not the queens. I'll just do the maidens. So September 1st is the Australian first day of spring. So there's spring right there. Yeah, that's spring. So I was like, all right, I'm in. I am in. And then I was like, bummer, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't think I can because I don't have fabric. And because I, what I want to do is what everybody does and stitch them all together actually like this so it will go spring summer autumn winter like that and need a fat half there's just no way around it need a fat half for that so I was like I'm out I, I guess I can't do this as much as I would really like to I can't do this um, because I wasn't really interested in buying a fat half of fabric for this piece. Um, at this point, um, I'm trying to limit my purchases for the rest of the year. I have just one big purchase left to make. Um, this is also a new Mirabilia. And this is a pretty big time project. And I now have 10 Mirabilias on the go. So this will technically make 14 officially. 11, unofficially 12. Like, it's just, it's a lot of pretty ladies. Um, and that doesn't even count my Nora's or Jones or Pasión de Gamos. Anyway, so it's like, I'm out. I don't want to buy fabric for this. I'm probably not going to do this. So we're going to transition into um, Stitchy Kindness, Mail Call, Stash Acquisitions, what have you. my dear friend Belinda did something and she doesn't even know she did it. So on Friday, August 10th, I went to the mailbox, World Cross Stitch Day. Keep in mind that last year on World Cross Stitch Day, I went to the mailbox and I pulled that fairy moon out of the mailbox. And this year I go to the mailbox and I pulled out a box like this from Australia. And inside said box was all of the Australian goodies. <laughs> um, Tim Tams, those are mine. Um, Caramello Koalas, Arnott's Caramel Crowns, 
Strawberry licorice. There's more. There's more. All of the goodies. I'm so excited. The crowns are almost gone. Um, I didn't bring all of that stuff because I'm trying to be good on my diet. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, failing miserably because you have to Tim Tam Slam every morning. It's just it's, it's it's just a thing. You just have to. If you have Tim Tams and you have fresh made coffee, you have a Tim Tam Slam. It's fine. Um, anyway, <laughs> so just all of these all of these goodies it could have stopped there, but no, because Belinda is the sweetest soul in the whole wide world. Also, was this. And this is Color Cascades 32 Count Opalescent Belfast in Silver Springs. I fed half. I'm so excited about this. So my maidens are going on this. This is stunning. This is such a beautiful fabric. If you have ever been looking for a gray green, oh my goodness, look no further. Get in touch with Tammy. Belinda. This is what made me cry. This is what made me cry because the second that I opened this package and I read what it was, I could not even, like, I couldn't even come up with the words because of how perfect this was. You did it again. <laughs> you did it again. Oh my goodness. These are going to look so beautiful on this. I just, I'm so excited. So excited. So like I said, while everybody else is starting to the season, I'll be doing something different. Um, I'm going to get my Maidens of the Season Part 1 kitted up and ready to go. <laughs> so excited. I might even start it on the 31st just because of the time zone difference. That's technically the first, at least by the time I'm conscious. Um, that's technically the first in Australia, so maybe, maybe. Oh, but wait, there's more. The, um, skull liner, she also sent that, as well as these two. She said that the cow, there we go, get my directions confused again. Um, she remembered that I had mentioned um, that for my farmhouse Christmas by Little House, I didn't have a really great farm minder. Ugh, so perfect, so perfect. When I opened this, that's exactly my first thought. That was exactly what I thought, so. We're in the same brain. Wait, Link's there. Oh, but wait. This is also 32 pound Belfast. This is um just plain, it's not opalescent. Um, and this is fat quarter of whole lot of love. And that is not showing up accurately. This color is so much richer than that. But it's this gorgeous purpley blue. The center is a little bit darker, but it's not that harsh. <sighs> Whole lot of love. No kidding. Tammy, your colors are stunning. I've had, uh, I had a piece of Tammy's fabric. I did my Frosted Pumpkin Fibery Friends on it. Um, but that's insane. Belinda. I have a big box that I'm throwing stuff into and I can't wait to send it to you but thank you thank you so much I am 
words. I am words. If Pants vs. Plans wasn't the most perfect title for this, I would totally call it I Am Words. <laughs> Belinda, so much love. So much love. Okay, got to keep moving. Uh, next is uh, Fabric of the Month for July from Under the Sea Fabrics. 32 Count Belfast in Pele's Fire. Bam! Right? This is insanity. This is crazy. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this. Not, not the first clue. I am keeping it though. I think. Maybe. We'll see. Love it. Cool, that's intense. My nails match it though, pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, uh, the next installment of the Cottage Garden Samplings Songbirds Garden Series. This is number two, Merry and Bright, featuring Black Cap Chickadees and Winterberry Holly. This is so beautiful. Vinny released the... Um, not the sneak peek now. We have the full view of number three, which is wis Winter's Wisdom. I had a plan on working on each of those one at a time. And so I'm going to work on forever and ever until it's done. And then this one and keep moving for the next 45 years, give or take. Um, <laughs> but I might have to start Winter's Wisdom immediately. It's so beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Um, and then last bit of haul that I have for this week, um, I finally joined Trisha's um, Three Owl Threads, her nest egg, and I decided to go with Gast. And the reason that I decided to join this is because a lot of the charts that I have purchased recently call for some hand dyes, and I have found my hand dyed stash to be severely lacking. Um, and so what a better way to start collecting um, so that when I'm ready to start these things, I might have a stash to go to. So I started with Gast, and um, it looks like we're in the F, E, and F part of the alphabet with one rando stuck in for flavor. Um, so I get the 10 five yards gains of Gast. Um, I'm gonna go through these real quick. Fragrant, fragrant cloves, Ondive. Flax, Forest Glade, that's gorgeous, see that? Uh, evergreen, which is ironic, because that's awful pale. <laughs> uh, Fisherman's Wharf, here's the rando, cherry wine. French lilac, love that, I love that antique, mauvey, purpley goodness. Espresso bean. Um, some of these are also uh, from the Simply Shaker series. And then this is Faded Rose, also. Vintagey, pinky goodness. So, collecting some hand dyes. Um, hindsight is 2020. I should have started with Classic Color Works, but um, maybe I'll add that on later. I don't know. So, ugh, those are good. So that's it for the haul. And that pretty much ends the video. I was going to talk about knitting because I have worked on my Through the Loops mystery shawl a little bit. Um, I've put in about 15 rows of 60 plus a bind off, something, give or take a little bit. So I have worked on it a little bit, um, but not really enough to show you yet. Um, I'd like to I'd like to get at least halfway through that final clue before I, before I show it. So I will, um, I will try to work on that a little bit more consistently. Maybe have it done next week. Probably not. My knitting bug is not there. Um, so stay tuned for that. I really need it to be there because Ann P is getting ready to release this gorgeous beaded something and I need needles. Um, <laughs> and so I think I need to clear that so that I have needles for this. Whatever it is.
I'm, I'm there. I want it. Um, so anyway, anyway, and then as far as books are concerned, I still need to do that separate video. I wrote separate video here in my notes and I spelled it all wrong. S E P E R A L T E. What? <laughs> I don't know. Speed writing. Anyway, um, I'm still intending on doing a separate video for that. I may get up and do that first thing tomorrow morning. We shall see. Um, hold me to nothing. I don't know. Um, I may... I don't know what I'm going to do. So, stay tuned. Keep your eyes peeled for a bookish update from me, separate from my updates, because there's a lot to talk about in books. Still reading like a banshee. Anyway, um, so I think that that is all that I have for you today. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support of me and my channel. I hope that you're well. I hope that you're stitching. And as always, be kind.